Hey, and thanks for watching. Two things we're gonna do today. The first, I'm gonna show you how to use version 2.0 of my IRR matrix module. And second, I'm gonna show you how to build your own IRR matrix. So let's go ahead and... So again, I'm using version 2.0 of my IRR matrix module. I should note, shoot, five years ago, I built uh, the first version of this module, and I recorded a video using that version on how to create create your own IRR matrix module. Now, the issue with that video, if you can call it an issue, is that first, it only uh, accommodated acquisition scenarios where you had one outflow in time zero. Uh, this module, version 2.0, now allows for you to use not just acquisition scenarios, but also development and value add scenarios where you have investment cash flows that go beyond time zero. The other thing that this module or this version of the module does is it accommodates both annual and monthly periods. So if you have a development scenario, you're using monthly periods, uh, this version of the module uh, can, can accommodate that scenario. Now let's first understand how to use the module. So you'll notice down here at the bottom, there are two worksheets. One is annual IRR matrix, the second monthly IRR matrix. You'll just take either of those worksheets or both, depending on whether you're using annual or monthly periods or both, and you're gonna pull that worksheet into your own model. Now, once you've done that, you're gonna come in and you're gonna link from the module to your own model, these blue font cells. So I'm looking at an annual period I have first acquisition costs. And so in your own model, you'll have your line of acquisition costs. Uh, in this case, I'm assuming uh, in the default uh, placeholder values, one acquisition cost of 15 million in time zero, and then none in the balance of the periods. And then loan proceeds. So under our investment cash flows, you have both your, your total acquisition costs, and then those are offset by some amount of loan proceeds to get to your, what I'm calling here net investment cash flows. Those are, those are the equity cash flows in your investment cash flow section. Uh, so you'll just go ahead and link over the loan proceeds. So those would be the fundings. In this case, again, I'm assuming all investment cash flows happen in time zero. Likewise, the loan funds all up front with no loan fundings over the balance of the term or the analysis period. Uh, then I'm going to drop in or link my operating cash flow. So I assume here cash flow from operations, which is NOI minus any capital expenditures incurred during the operating period. Uh, that gives you my cash flow from operations line that I'll link to. Now you'll note that I also include a forward-looking 12 months, or in this case, a forward-looking year of, of cash flow from operations. I'm valuing the property based on cash flow from operations and not NOI. Or in other words, I'm assuming that my capital expenditures are included in my net operating income uh, for purposes of valuation. Uh, you can uh, modify the model if you prefer to simply use NOI and ignore either capital reserves or, or capital expenditures, which is often the case. I find it's helpful here because then I see the volatility of the cash flows. Nevertheless, we drop in our cash flow from uh, operations line. We also link over our debt service line. And the result when we take a CFO minus debt service, cash flow after financing. And you'll notice as we're going in, going through each section, what we have is unlevered as well as levered cash flows, and that allows us to model unlevered and levered returns. And then next we have reversion cash flow. So I'm going to link over uh, what I'm calling here property value. That's what you anticipate selling uh, either at the end of each period or in this case at the end of our total 10-year analysis period. I'll subtract for some selling costs, and and then the module itself calculates proceeds from sale. This is an unlevered line. And then I uh, link over the loan payoff schedule. So in this case, year 10, there's a loan payoff of 4.561 million. Again, in the, the dummy values gives us a net reversion cash flow on a levered basis of 12.545 million. Uh, then as I add up each of those lines uh, between our outflows, investment cash flow, and our inflows, operating cash flow and reversion cash flow, we get our unlevered cash flow line here, as well as an unlevered IRR, and then a levered cash flow, and a levered IRR. And this assumes a 10-year hold. Now, 
We then need to calculate the reversion value at the end of each period. And this allows us then to do an IRR calculation for each or by the as of the end of each period. And so the methodology that's used here is you're going to assume some cap rate per year. So you'll say, okay, at the uh, in time zero, let's assume a five cap, 505 in year one, 510 in year two, and essentially the cap rate grows by five basis points in each year. These are again, your own assumptions that you'll drop in. In my case here, I assume in year 10, there is a 5.5 uh, cap rate. I divide our cash flow from operation in the forward looking year by that cap rate that gives me a property value in this line. And then we subtract out selling costs to arrive at a proceeds from sale, an unlevered value. We then subtract loan payoff and I, you'll need to link over some payoff schedule. Uh, I've automatically calculated mine for the dummy values and I get a net reversion cash flow. Now what happens then is all of those cash flows above and the blue ones you'll link to your own model and the black are calculations within this module. Down here then we have the IRR matrix. So you'll see in each year, if we were just to simply hold uh, th this opportunity for some period of years, let's say six years, we can assume a 6.33% IRR. If we hold it for the full 10, it's 6.57. Likewise, and that's on an unlevered basis. On a levered basis, the, this would be our approximation of IRR in each year. Now, how does how is this helpful, you might ask? Well, imagine that your NOI isn't doesn't grow steadily like this. So let's say that uh, your NOI is 750 per year for the first five years. And then let's say there's a slight, there's a period of maybe concessions when, when your tenant renews. Let's imagine that this is a single tenant or, or what have you. And there's some concessions and, and there's only 650,000 of cash flow from operations in year six. But then we, we get a big rent bump and this rolls to market. And let's say from here on it's 850. Oops, 850,000. As we come down, what you'll see is the IRR, two, three, three, 3.6, drops to 1.27. And then in year six, 5.6. But then notice the IRR begins dropping. And so based on the analysis above, it, it, it seems to be that it's in our best interest to exit right after we get a, a renewal of our tenant in that year six. We get the tenant renewed with a new long-term lease, and then we sell at that point. And that is the max IRR based on this analysis that we can expect. So that's that's the value of the IRR matrix. One other thing I'll point out in the module, if we go to the monthly section, you'll see it's identical to the annual, except for number one, you'll need dates. And that's because Excel's XIRR uh, function that calculates the IRR requires a date for each period. And so I have a starting date for your time zero and then a date thereafter. I recommend that this date be the last day of the month of your time zero so that each of your days going forward are likewise last day of the month. Uh, and then again, you drop in your investment cash flow, your operating cash flow, your reversion cash flow. You do some calculation of monthly reversion value by including a cap rate. Uh, a loan payoff by period. And then you'll see down here, this actually is calculating on an annual basis, but with monthly cash flows, what the, uh, the approximation of the IRR is at the end of each year. So that's how to use the IRR matrix. Now, how about how to build it yourself? So let's say that um, you have slightly different methodology, or maybe you don't want to drop in the module. You just want to simply drop in your own matrix here. How do you do it? Well, if you, if you dig into this formula, it's actually rather simple. It's a combination of absolute and relative cell references and some Boolean logic. So let's go ahead and delete these values. All right, and I'll just go ahead and delete these as well. I'm gonna build these out. So what I have is a year in the horizontal and a year in the vertical. And the reason that's, and, and in the horizontal, these are my cash flows. And so I need to include a year zero. In 
our vertical, these are our, our IRRs, and we're the, the earliest that we would exit is the end of year one. So the end of year one would have two cash flows, a cash flow in, in year zero and a cash flow at the end of year one. And then we're going to have cash flows as if we held for two years and then for three years and four years. So we're going to write a fairly simple formula here that will make this dynamic and quick. So once I have the setup with my horizontal and vertical, I just simply come here and I first ask using Boolean logic is the current cash flow year or the horizontal row less than or equal to the hold period. So I go equals open parentheses. I'm going to come up and select the cash flow year or period, and then I'll lock in just the row hitting F4 one, two times. Okay. And that, what that allows me to do is copy down and the row will hold absolute, meaning it won't move, but I can copy right and the column will move. I'm going to ask, is this less than or equal to the hold period assumption or year? And in this case, I'm going to lock in the column hitting F4 one, two, three times such that as I copy to the right, the column will hold absolute. But as I copy down, the row will move or, or be or stay rel or be relative. I close parentheses on that and that's a Boolean logic. So if the result of that is true, then it has an equivalent value of one. And if it's false, it'll have equivalent equivalent value of zero. And that's Boolean logic. Uh, I have a, a separate tutorial on how specifically to use that in real estate. But what you're going to see now, if this is done right, is I'm going to get true. You'll notice the trues fall. So if this is a two year hold, I'm going to have true through to the end of year two and then false thereafter year, say seven, you've got true through to the end of year seven and so forth. So that's the first step. I build that Boolean logic. Now with this Boolean logic statement written, I can now multiply it by some value. And the result again will be that value if it's true or zero if it's false. And what is the value? Well, I want to output the investment cash flow, the operating cash flow, and then the annual reversion value in the year in which the hold period is meant to end. So let's start just with the investment cash flow and the operating cash flow. I'll go up here to my investment cash flow section. And you'll notice that the assumptions are positive, but investment cash flow is a negative value in our DCF, right? It's an outflow. And so I need to turn this value negative just by adding a negative to the front of my reference. And then I want to link to that cell there, my acquisition cost. So this is the, the unlevered net investment cash flow line. That's the total acquisition cost that I have before, t before taking into, uh, into account debt. And I need to lock in the row by hitting F4 one, two times. And then I'll add operating cash flow. In this case, cash flow from operation. That's our, the lowest cash flow line or the net cash flow line in our operating cash flow section. And again, lock in the row F4 one, two times. Now I close parentheses on that and let's come down and look at it. I can copy that formula out. And what you'll see is we have our investment cash flow and then we have that cash flow from operation. Now, what we're missing though is the reversion cash flow or the value of the property at the end of the hold period. And that's just going to require one addition, uh, one additional Boolean logic statement. So I hit plus open parentheses. This is our Boolean logic statement. We're going to ask is the current cash flow period lock in the row one, two F fours. Is it equal to the hold period hit F four, one, two, three times close parentheses. If it's true, it out, it'll output a one. If it's a false, it'll output a zero. We then multiply that by what the proceeds from sale in our annual reversion section, lock in the row with an F four, one, two times hit enter. And now we should be able to copy this out. And there we have it, right? So we have in, in with a hold of only one year, you've got an outflow in year zero. And then in year one, you have your cash flow from operation plus your reversion cash flow. Let's do an IRR now. So we come out to this IRR row, hit equals IRR, open parentheses, select the range from year one through year 10. And this IRR function of Excels will ignore the years with zero or, or at least they won't be taken into account in your calculation, close parentheses, and then we can copy this down and you'll see 
in our year six is the optimal hold period, assuming we believe all the assumptions that we've made. So that is uh, IRR matrix on an unlevered basis. The levered calculation is the same. In fact, what I'm gonna do, I'll just come and grab all of that logic, hit Control C, come down here to our levered, Control V, and then we just need to update the formulas. The IRR formula, we don't need to update, automatically came down, but we do need to update our single IRR matrix formula. And what I'll do is I'll select the very first cell in the upper left-hand corner of this range, hit F2, and what F2 will do is it opens up and shows me the cells that are included in this formula. And all I need to do actually grab drag and drop the reference to the cell where it should be located. So the first thing I notice here is there's a reference to the uh, cash flow year that's up in the unlevered. Just to keep this consistent and clean, I'll pull that down to the levered IRR. That's the first. The second, let's scroll to the top. If you recall, it's right now from the investment cash flow section, pulling the unlevered investment cash flow. Well, here I'm calling acquisition costs. Just pull this down to the net investment cash flow, which is acquisition cost minus any loan proceeds that are brought in. So because this is a negative value, right? You get it's technically negative 15 plus six gives us 9 million in net investment cash flow. You'll note that's a low leverage loan, right? Less than, less than 50%. Um, then we come to our operating cash flow. It's currently referencing our cash flow from operation and unlevered line. We come to our levered line, cash flow after financing. And then we scroll down to our annual reversion. We go from proceeds from sale, drag and drop to our net reversion cash flow, or in other words, proceeds from sale minus loan payoff. Hit enter. That's updated this one formula. It's just a matter of copying and pasting to the balance of our levered IRR. And you'll see again, Year six is our optimal hold period based even on a levered basis. So that is how to use uh, my IRR matrix module as well as a tutorial for how to build your own IRR matrix module. Let me know if you have any questions. You can do so either in the comments or uh, shoot me a message on Adventures in CRE. Otherwise, thanks for your time.